Hey friend, can't tell you how much I appreciate you and your listenership. I wanted to bring two things to light, if you'd allow me to. Number one, next week's broadcasts, of course it's Christmas week, and I have a very touching, poignant story to share with you, a Christmas story. I'll be honest with you, I don't often cry, I'm not prone to that, but it kind of brought me to tears, and I hope you'll listen in on that. The second thing is that I'm not sure if you know or not, but I have a personal podcast called the Mike McCurry Podcast. Right now, we're covering this book right here, E.M. Bounds' book on prayer. I think it might be a help to you. If you wouldn't mind, after you listen to today's broadcast of the Bible Tract Echoes, go ahead and search on your favorite podcast player. Search for the Mike McCurry Podcast. So, number one, make sure you listen on Monday of this coming week. You're not going to want to miss what we have to share. And then number two, find the Mike McCurry podcast on your favorite player. God bless. I am so privileged to conclude our week of broadcasts with you, our listener. Thank you so much for being a part of the Bible Tract Echoes radio program. I'm your host, Mike McCurry. If the Lord allows us to, we are going to be concluding our discussion of the sin of pride and then also going back and taking a bird's eye view of these discipleship studies that we've looked at. Let me encourage you once again, if you'd like to receive any of our discipleship studies for free from BTI, from Bible Tracks Incorporated, we'd love to send them to you. It's our privilege to not only print gospel tracts, but to offer these to you as well. And so if you would, I'd like, I would absolutely love for you to grab your Bible. Get your Bible close at hand. I'd like for you to look at the book of Proverbs. We're going to look at a couple of verses there in just a moment. Before we do that, though, I'd like to talk about a gospel track that I have with me here in the studio called, Are You Afraid? It has sort of a a somber, a little bit of a dramatic front cover here, and it kind of prompts you to open up the inside and answer that question, are you afraid? I'm so very glad that Jesus knew that there would be things that would come in the world that would make us afraid. Now, friend, maybe you are just afraid of this year. You're ready for it to be done. This this year that has brought so much craziness and so much uh, turmoil and so many circumstances of life, maybe you're ready for this year to be done and you're afraid next year is going to be just like it. Well, friend, Jesus gave us some promises to help us. This is how much he really loves us. Here's one of his promises in Isaiah 41 verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee, yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. That's the kind of God that you and I serve. And that's the God that we talk about in this gospel tract, Are You Afraid? It's an interesting read, and I think you will find it of worth if you don't know Christ as Savior, or maybe you're a Christian friend, and you'd like to order some of these for free from our website, BibleTracksInc.org, you'd like to know how you can get them, well, we send them out for free. You don't even have to put in your credit card information. BibleTracksInc.org will send you some today. Don't miss out on that opportunity. We've been talking about, for the last couple of days, been talking about pride. We looked at some biblical victims of pride. We talked about the description of pride on Wednesday. And today, we're going to continue and conclude with pride's cure. Before we do that, though, I'd like to look at the book of Proverbs, chapter number 11. Proverbs, chapter 11. I hope you find yourself there. Before we discuss the cure to pride... I'd like to point out the end of pride, what the result is. The deadly and sometimes fatal result is shame and destruction. Proverbs 11 verse 2 says this, When pride cometh, then cometh shame, but with the lowly is wisdom. You see, friend, if you never put yourself up on a pedestal, you can never fall down off that pedestal. Let me continue with Proverbs 16, verse number 18. Flip a couple chapters to the right there. Proverbs 16, 18. The Bible says, Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. I've done my utmost to stress 
that we've laid a firm foundation of biblical concepts as we talk about, as it pertains to this sin of pride, friend, if you struggle with pride, please, it will be a daily struggle, it will be a weekly struggle, a minute-by-minute struggle, but do your utmost to lay it aside. I don't want you to suffer the shame that pride brings. I don't want you to be destroyed the way pride does. Please, heed Proverbs 11, 2. Heed Proverbs 16, 18, and put pride to the side. Very quickly, let's look at pride's cure. First of all, we need to confess our sin. 1 John 1, 9 says, If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Next, we should serve God's people. The New Testament also tells us of Jesus, the fact that he made himself of no reputation, took upon him the form of a servant, was made in the likeness of men, and being found in fashion as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient unto death, even the death of the cross. God, Jesus, was willing to humble himself so low that he put up with being placed on a cross by men. He, God himself, allowed himself to be made of no reputation. Get busy serving God's people. That will very much help remove pride. Do some work for somebody else and don't expect payment. Wash somebody's car, shine someone's shoes, run an errand for somebody. Forget yourself for a while. Can I say practically here? Consider serving in a nursing home ministry. There are no ministries that I think I love more than being able to be a part of a nursing home. I always walk out of that assisted living feeling more encouraged than I walk in. I go in thinking I'm going to be an encouragement to these great folks, these elderly saints, and I always walk out thinking, man, oh man, I'm so glad I did that today. Next, obey God's man in your life. You should have a local pastor. Exodus 10 verse 3 And Moses and Aaron came in unto Pharaoh and said unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, How long wilt thou refuse to humble thyself before me? Let my people go, that they may serve me. Friend, you must be very careful when you get crossways with the man of God in your life. On that note, if you need a good local church, if you need a recommendation for where to find a good pastor that you can put yourself under, friend, please get in contact. Text me directly, 309 316-7240. Again, that's 309-316-7240. Next, remember God's blessings. Deuteronomy 8 verse 2. This will help you forget about your pride. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. Friend, there's a lot of different ways to help with this sin of pride, to help clamp it down and to help disperse it from your life. I haven't given you all of them. I'm going to ask you, please, order this discipleship study for yourself if you'd like to. I skimmed the high points of it. But understand, this sin of pride, it's deadly. You must, you must, if you ever want to serve God in any significant way, you must put pride to the side. Now, if you will allow me, I'd like to spend the last few minutes of this week of broadcasts reviewing what we've learned from these discipleship studies. As always, you can get them for free from our website, but I'd like to go back and tell you. Maybe you missed some, you didn't have the opportunity to listen into every single one of these broadcasts. Of course, you can always go back and Listen to the podcast version, the YouTube version. We post them on Facebook and Instagram and all of those things. But let's go back and remember what we've learned about thus far. We began, most importantly, with salvation. If we don't have salvation right, then we can't get anything else right. And close on the heels of learning about salvation, we talked about baptism. That was our beginning, the structure, the foundation of these discipleship studies. We can talk till we're blue in the face about the wrong doctrine related to the gift of tongues or false teachers or things of that nature, the sin of pride. But if we don't get salvation worked out first, then everything else is a moot point. So we started with salvation. Then we progressed to baptism. Then lesson number three, we talked about the Bible. 
the true foundation of everything, as I have stressed again and again, I don't want to give you my opinions, my thoughts about these studies. I want to give you the Bible. And then we progressed on to prayer. Our ability to communicate with God requires a focus on prayer. Lesson number five, we talked about the enemy. We need to know who we're facing off against. Of course, a lot of times we are our own worst enemy, but lesson number five talked about the devil. Then we got into number six, the Holy Spirit. Oftentimes, the Holy Spirit can be a neglected part of the Trinity, and so I'm glad we were able to spend a few moments talking about him. Then number seven, discipleship study number seven, we talked about soul winning. That's something that's near and dear to the heart of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Lesson number eight, the church. Friend, if you don't have a good local church that you attend, please let us know. Let me know specifically so that I can help recommend somewhere to you. You can text me directly if you'd like a recommendation for your area. I've been all over the country, around the world a little bit, and so I might have an idea. I also might just know somebody that can help. Text me, 309-316-7240. After we talked about the church, lesson number nine was on stewardship. How do we take care of God's business monetarily? After lesson number nine, we jumped into lesson 10, the flesh versus the spirit, the old man versus the new man. Of course, we touched on that when we talked about and did an expository study through Galatians not long before the discipleship studies, but lesson 10, flesh versus the spirit. Number 11, we talked about wisdom. Man, it's so difficult, especially in today's world, to always know how to be wise. And so we took a biblical look at that. Lesson 12, we looked at the will of God. 13 was sin. 14, the armor of God. 15, the battle for your mind. All of these studies, I believe, could be a help to you. If you have not heard them before, you can go back into the archives on the podcast, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, TuneIn. Wherever you listen, just search for Bible Tract Echoes. Of course, you can get the full readout, the full substance, such as it is, of each of these studies by ordering them from our website, BibleTractsInc.org. From there, we continued on and we kind of jumped around. I have not hit every single discipleship study. We're going to be going a different direction as we draw these discipleship studies to a close on the radio program. But some of the ones that you may have missed or ones that you'd like to go back and make up, we passed over the concept of music, the love of money, standing alone. We didn't touch on the pastor or even missions. We did stop for a few moments and talk about forgiveness and heaven and hell. Some others that we touched on and concluded with were breaking bad habits, and this week we've concluded with pride. There are still a few others left that might be of help to you. I would love for you to contact me. Again, text me, 309-316-7240. I'd love to get this into your hands. Let's conclude with this. Never be content with where you are, spiritually speaking. Always be striving for more. Want God's blessings on your life and work for God's blessings on your life. Thankfully, we serve a God that will give us abundantly, exceedingly more than we could ever ask or think, but it's going to require a relationship. And so use these discipleship studies to help further and strengthen that. Thank you so much for being a part of this week of broadcasts. We'll come to you next week very soon. God bless. Have a great day for his glory.